on January 6, 1982, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I broke into a chamber beneath the Calvary Escarpment, north of the city wall of Jerusalem. In that chamber is the Ark of the Covenant, the Table of Showbread, and several other things that I didn't see. They were covered with animal skins, with boards, and then with stones. We had excavated down that escarpment. We had found three cutouts in the wall, like a recessed bookcase. We know from the valley north of Jerusalem that the ancient kings and rulers cut these things out in cliffs near uh, populous areas or where a lot of people would be going by, and they put plaques of stone and whatever else in there bearing messages. We found the cutouts. We found the cross holes. If you read in the book of Matthew and the Gospels where it talks about Christ's death, it says the earth shook violently and the rocks were rent. Right to the left of the cross hole at the base of where Christ died on the cross, the rock was rent. After Christ died and the centurion stuck his spear into Christ's spleen and the blood and water came out, it went down through that crack. It went on to the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant that God had arranged to be hidden in that chamber 600 years before Christ died. Now, what is the significance of this? Psalm 77, 13 says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. On the day of atonement, the goat that represented Christ as the sin bearer after all of the sins were figuratively transferred to its head was killed. Its blood was taken into the most holy place and sprinkled on the mercy seat. Those folks looked forward to the fact that Christ would die. They confessed their sins on the head of lambs and took their, these, the lives of these innocent little animals. We, by faith, believe that Christ has indeed died and we in praying to God in Christ's name receive forgiveness of our sins by faith in that fact. North of the city wall in Jerusalem, several feet below the current ground level, rests a perfect explanation and demonstration of the old covenant, the sacrificial system, and the new covenant. You and I are living in the most exciting time in Earth's history. The Ark of the Covenant, the earthly throne of the Almighty, and a container for the Ten Commandments, the stipulations of His covenant with mankind, which He wrote in stone with His own finger. The location of the Ark, unknown for thousands of years, has been the subject of great supposition among Bible students and archaeologists alike. Is it in a cave on Mount Nebo, or perhaps concealed beneath a church in Ethiopia? While the speculation continues, there's one man who claimed to have personally seen the Ark of the Covenant, my friend, Ron Wyatt. Ron claimed to have located the Ark in Jerusalem, hidden away in a cave system beneath the Calvary Escarpment, an area referenced in the Bible as the place of a skull, the crucifixion site of Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth. Not only did Ron claim to have located the Ark, but he also stated that the crucifixion took place directly above that location, that an earthquake at that time opened a fissure between the crucifixion site and that of the ark, and that the blood of Messiah flowed down through that crack and on to the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant. The Bible states that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. Ron said that just as the blood of sacrificial animals, the blood of Jesus, the lamb that was slain, literally fulfilled the covenant requirement for atonement. Ron believed that the garden tomb was the actual sepulcher that Jesus occupied for only three days and three nights. 
That tomb is, as the Bible states, only a short distance from the place of a skull and the site he determined to be that of the crucifixion. Therefore, his investigations and excavations were centered in and around the area of the garden tomb. In 1989, those excavations were closed, and since that time, there's been a great deal of speculation and controversy surrounding his findings. Controversy that has caused a great deal of anguish with the Garden Tomb Association, for Ron was not able to validate his claims. He passed away in 1999, leaving no conclusive evidence. Since that time, we at Wyatt Archaeological Research have been making every effort to substantiate his claims to provide a second witness that would transform supposition into established fact. In 2002, after having received permission from the Garden Tomb Association and the Israel Antiquities Authority, our endeavor began in earnest. The following presentation is a summary of a tremendous amount of work that has been done over the past four years. The most labor-intensive and expensive projects ever undertaken by Wyatt Archaeological Research. It is dedicated to our Savior and to the scores of volunteer workers and contributors without whom it would have been impossible to accomplish this monumental task. Scripture advises us to prove all things and to hold fast that which is good. What you are about to see is based on that premise and is the commitment of Wyatt Archaeological Research. He charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised again the third day. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulcher, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. In 2002, after having received the necessary permits, Wyatt Archaeological Research began investigations at the garden tomb and in the surrounding area. Project Truth began. Matthew 27 informs us that Pontius Pilate issued an order to make the sepulcher secure in order to prevent the disciples from stealing the body of Jesus and saying, He is risen. Ron Wyatt believed that after what Scripture describes as a great stone was rolled into position, an iron pin was placed in the wall to prevent the stone from being rolled back. It was Ron's theory that a metal object found in the outer wall of the garden tomb was the remains of that iron pin which had been sheared off when the angel rolled back the stone.